Hi, Dr. Reagan Robertson, CCO of Productive Dentist Academy here, and I have a question for you. Are you finding it hard to get your team aligned to your vision, but you know you deserve growth just like everybody else? That's why we've created the PDA Productivity Workshop. For nearly 20 years, PDA workshops have helped dentists just like you align their teams, get control of scheduling, and create productive practices that they love walking into every day. Just imagine how you will feel when you know your schedule is productive, your systems are humming, and your team is aligned to your vision. It's simple, but it's not necessarily easy. We can help. Visit ProductiveDentist.com slash workshop. That's ProductiveDentist.com slash workshop to secure your seats now. Nobody wants to micromanage. You want to inspire leaders who can take charge yep. and, and have a voice of their own. Because I know daily I talk about how amazing my own team is. And I feel like I work with the dream team. But mm. that just it, that is not something where you just snap your fingers and you get a dream team. You have yeah. to be great as a leader. Welcome to the Everyday Practices Podcast. I'm Reagan Robertson and my co-host, Dr. Chad Johnson and I are on a mission to share the stories of everyday dentists who generate extraordinary results using practical, proven methods you can take right into your own dental practice. If you're ready to elevate patient care and produce results that are anything but ordinary, buckle up and listen in. Welcome to Everyday Practices Dental Podcast. I am your host, Reagan Robertson, here with my esteemed co-host, Dr. Chad Johnson. Kisses for your fans. Blowing kisses to Voted all bronze. Our number three fans. We're the number one third place spot. That's right. Of all dental podcasts. So Thanks thank you, to our listeners. fans. Yeah. You know, you know, I heard, I heard there were rumors, there were little salty rumors, and I my response to so the world at large was don't don't be salty if you don't have the best fans. We have the best fans. What can we say? Um, I I don't have anything to say, but lo love and peace, peace and love, says Ringo Starr. Um, <laughs> we are here to deliver part two of our book review of Unreasonable Hospitality, The Remarkable Power of Giving People More Than They Expect by Will Gadara. Fantastic. And you know where we left off last time with my pants down when you asked, so to speak, <laughs> so to speak. Okay. Well, not I, I already got a call about the calf contest with Dr. Clint use from a couple episodes back and um, forgot that we left that in. Yeah. Well, uh, I produced my photo and um, I didn't hear anything from Clint and I think he's just trying to hope that I forget about it perhaps a little embarrassed, you know, you produced the goods and I did, it was and too much glory for him. It was, just I'm going to have much. to tie his, I'm going to have to tie his wife in because she'll make him do it. I know he wants to probably like kind of back out because he knows he beat me, but uh, I'm not going to let him just, you know, uh, just take the loss without actually it's producing. A it's a forfeiture. Yeah. He's forfeiting because he knows he's going to win, but so he's trying to be nice. No, you have to beat me fair and square, pal. You have to show up and beat me to a pulp for me to take the loss. I'm not just going to take a loss like on a forfeiture. Uh -uh. How about Old this? Man. We we all have a season, so we will all be together in September at the 20th Productivity Workshop Celebration Bonanza Extravaganza. And uh, how about all three of us work on our calves and then we can show off our calves in full trifecta. That's awesome because it gives me cycling season to to get it going. Right now it's swim season. I mean, you know, like my calves are just swim right. season sexy and they're not uh, full I'll, cycling I'll, season. I'll pump up my bike tires. Okay. okay. So okay. last time we were talking with my pants down, so to speak, symbolically speaking, um, about the win-win-win. So I went back to that chapter because you asked, what exactly do you mean? So I went back, listened to the whole chapter because it was four and a half minutes long. Big deal. I rode over to Staples, got a new keyboard, came back and, uh, you know, listened real quick to that. And he was talking about Chipotle doing fresh ingredients and um, that if they cut the fresh ingredients there, 
then it was a win because he put the responsibility back on and not will he said he knew a guy or whatever so the 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 store owner put the responsibility or that maybe it was even the ceo of the whole chipotle operation you know instead of having those ingredients cut up and processed in essence at a factory and then shipped for a couple of days and you can taste the difference maybe i can't but he can and but um, if Chipotle cuts the ingredients and grills the chicken right there, it puts more responsibility on the employee. That's one win. Why? Because then the employee steps up and has more ownership and, you know, has mm -hmm. more um, pride in what they're doing. Number two, the customer wins because they are now uh, enjoying fresher food, as this example goes. And the third win of Michael Scott's win, win, win is that um, the 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 manager slash owner, uh, visionary, whatever the upper person is also getting the 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 benefit of having a premium uh, product, happy employees, happy customers. So there's I think the that win, win, that's win. a good takeaway for the win, 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 because because my quick assumption to that both you and I, I know I originally like went back and and read that chapter again. So yeah. I also was a little confused with it. And I thought, okay, this makes sense. It's a win for the customer, a win for the team, a win for the business. So that makes that that trifecta complete yes. there with it. You know, speaking from my own perspective, if I, you know, in any role that I've been in throughout my career, I want to have the opportunity to grow. I want to be part of something bigger. And I want to know that what I'm doing makes a difference. And so yes. with the bringing in the, the, the fresh food, it, it, I think it is a great description of the win, 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 because the customer right. gets to see that it's not prepackaged, flash frozen, rehydrated, yeah. whatever. And so I like that, that it's a win there. I like that it's a win because it gives you an opportunity to not feel like a robot in food service. So you're not just taking a burger patty like in McDonald's and slapping it in a microwave or whatever they do. I've never yep. been back there, so I can't say. Uh, yep. Uh, and, you know, sales escalate as a result. So it wins for the business too. And, and I like that. And, I, and I, it does get back to the micromanaging piece of it too. Nobody wants to micromanage. You want to inspire leaders who can take charge yep. and, and have a voice of their own. Because I know daily I talk about how amazing my own team is. And I feel like I work with the dream team, but mm. that just, it, that is not something where you just snap your fingers and you get a dream team. You have yeah. to be great as a leader. And I think uh, at step number one, which means you are responsible, you're accountable, you have tools. How many of us make mistakes for years? Uh, it's a lot of work has to go into creating what you would consider a dream team. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Interestingly, the subsequent chapter from the win, win, win is let them lead and when they first said that, again, I'm listening audible. I thought he said, let them leave. And, <laughs> and if appropriate. That's a good point. Like, yeah. are you willing to train people up and potentially they might be picked off or go into a different industry or whatever, you know, like letting them leave as opposed to being like, I'm not going to train my team. So that way no one wants them, you know, like, uh, but it was cool. The let them lead was the best time to give someone more responsibility is when they're not quite ready for it yet. That was one of his quotes. Yes. And I thought that was pretty cool because it's like, yeah, he said, you know, the guy with uh, that's just fresh out of school isn't going to make the best choices on the beer, this and that, you know, within the book. Um, but the person 10 years out uh, probably would make fewer mistakes, but you don't know the growth potential of the guy that was fresh out of college, you know, helping sell that, uh, that beer. So, yep. I think that's a great point. Letting someone lead right before they are ready for it reminds me of the hero's journey. Yeah. So in every hero's journey, you will get support alongside you. You will suffer the highs and the lows. Just like I said, in building that dream team, it takes effort, which means you're going to skin your knees a few times. You're going to make some mistakes along the mm -hmm. way. If you're able to learn from them, you surround yourself with trusted support. You will get to a point though, you will always have to make a leap on your own. And that I think points to that. There is no right time there. You will end up having to stretch no matter what, if you were going for something greater or something bigger or something that was going to require more experience there, there's a first time for everything. You're going to have to do it 
Mm -hmm. on your own. And you're going to have to do it a little bit before you're ready. And that sometimes that's easier said than done. Yep. Yeah. So last time we, um, before we hit record, you had a few good points that you wanted to bring up, but um, I hogged it all. So please share with us uh, some of your thoughts from the book. Well, my favorite, my favorite chapter probably was raindrops create oceans because it's catchy and because I really, really love being as efficient as possible. I've got a lot of growth to do in that respect, but when you're running a business, it is amazing to me how much the little things stack up and can cost the company a lot of dollars. So there used to be a joke, I should look it up, uh, about companies that purchased, I think it was Herman Miller. Do you remember Herman Miller business chairs? No. There was a Oh, there was a big joke, very unofficial, that if a company went at, went ahead during this was like right at the dot com boost, if they bought the company, everyone Herman Miller chairs, that company was going to fold. And I think the 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 metaphor, the parody of that, what's the right term, is that the point of the story is if you are not wise and stewards of of your finances uh, and you don't realize that everything uh, builds up, you will you will ultimately fail. And so sure. raindrops create oceans was a great chapter in in so much as it it helped them understand where to put their where to focus, where to focus their finances and and when to be smart with it so that they were good stewards. And then the other thing, the point that they paired with it really well that will did was finishing strong and making that last inch count. I feel like this is an episode bragging about my team lately, Chad, but at PDA. No, it's tangible. Yeah, yeah. tangible examples. We we just keep experiencing larger and larger workshops and, and it is through a really intricate combined effort. And what I have found in the team that I get the honor of working with is they are very good at making that last inch count. In other words, there is no good enough. It is how can we make this exceptional for the client? How can we make this exceptional for the attendee? How can we make this exceptional for our team and don't give up? And, and part of that is having a mission that we feel so strongly about. So we have this kind of compass pointing us the right direction. And so, um, you know, finishing strong and making that last inch count was impactful for me. But also he said, if you remember, uh, there were failures that he had one when he came in 50th, uh, as far as the best restaurants in the world, which let's look at this. It's just like a high performance athlete. He's complaining that he made number 50 on the list of 50 best restaurants in the world. How many right. restaurants are there in the world? Oh, right. Right. How many millions? Yeah. Let's let I, like, like, this is a stupid guess. Let's say 10 million. Let's Google it. We got to Google this. How many yes. restaurants are in the world? Hey, Siri. <laughs> Do you want it? Yeah. Tell me. Okay. It says the food service industry is worth around 34.25 billion US dollars and estimated to grow by to 56.3 billion in 2027. And according to estimates for 2020, the worldwide number of food service establishments was around 23.13 million. So here's the deal. I'm logarithmically not that far off. <laughs> I think it's it's incredible. So so high performance athlete disappointed and con you know con considered it a failure and a yeah. disgrace that he made 50 and he mentions drinking the best bottle of champagne on the worst day yes. and when and i think this is a really powerful lesson yep uh when you lose it is important to treat the team with as much encouragement and support as if you've won it's yeah. not i i didn't take that as we celebrate and we rah rah we're re we're realistic about it but I think it's, it places disappointment in the right area by saying, you know, this is, this was the goal. And then it gives a little bit of dissociation where we are still whole and complete as humans and as a team, and we're yeah. going to celebrate what we did put in, but we need to regroup. We need to re-strategize. We need to figure out a different way so that we can win next time. He was raw about his losses and mm -hmm. about um, the negative and stuff like that. And yeah, consolation or consoling um, is therapeutic and important. Yes. 
Yes. Another yeah. uh, takeaway that I had was create your own traditions. Yeah. Um, hmm. Do you have any well, traditions at Veranda? Yes, we do. Oh, I've got one and you'll, okay. I'll just get to it. Okay. Uh, Thanksgiving, we have a uh, team KFC lunch. <laughs> what? We have, KF, we have KFC because we I, there's nowhere around us that really has like turkey or whatever, you know, like uh -huh. for lunch or whatever. So, but so then we just get a, a bucket of KFC fried chicken and, and like the sides and stuff. And basically it's we, like, we are not being paid by KFC for this. Endorsement. No, um, nor Taco <laughs> Bell uh, run for the border. Um, but uh, uh, like, so it was kind of my cheap, you know, I started the office um, on my own, you know, like right out yes. of school uh, just from scratch. And so we we would do KFC um, Thanksgiving lunch, but late, basically like Wednesday before the um, and and it kind of sounds lame because it's like KFC, really, you know, but, you know, they've got mashed potatoes and gravy and they've got, you know, some sides and stuff like that. So it was like, OK, it's kind of like turkey, but it's chicken and it's but it's fried and that's good. And I'm sure the pilgrims and natives didn't have Pepsi, but you know, like now, you know, we've got, you know, all the stuff and biscuits. And so it kind of seems like biscuits. the cheapest. Yeah. It's it's like the cheapest uh, Thanksgiving non-Turkey meal, but like, at least it's a, a, a like an American effort towards it, like a, a, like a very B class effort. And we've always just done it since. Did you know, I believe it's Japan. Did you know that Japan is crazy for KFC at Christmas time? And they should be. Really? <laughs> I don't know. But but yeah, so it, it's an example of like, would, would other people adopt this tradition? No, but it is a veranda tradition. And uh, it's kind of almost silly. And that's actually what kind of makes it cool. You know, I like, like that. Well, that fits your third level of why too to always bring humor to life. And that yeah. I mean, that is unique. I, I call that your unique selling position. Or, uh, personally, I love the humor that you bring. At PDA, we have I'm wearing the shirt today, but you can't see it. I have to lean back. I have seen it earlier. Yeah, it's a goat. Uh, three yes, goats on a greatest surfboard. of all teams. The greatest of all teams. So 2024, PDA is the goat, greatest of all teams. And we have uh, a spirit animal that we name every year. It comes from our CEO, Dr. Victoria Peterson. I believe it did start out very humorless, humorless, humorously in 2011 or 2012. The first year was the donkey. And I think we were stubborn about excellence. And it all started from a donkey that Victoria had seen on Hawaii and it had a big butt or something like that. It was just something really silly. So that like had this funny little momentum and we started going and it's now grown into this character. And I think it's a fun tradition. It makes yeah. it different and same with the KFC. So yeah, create your own traditions, uh, but don't force it. Don't force it. I think it's just something that can spontaneously happen. Yeah. Another another tip that I loved was share the spotlight by highlighting others. I can't say this enough. There are team members who who um, you know not everyone's extroverted, and it's not like that. But really being able to remind the team and remind the community or patients or clients that it takes and it takes a team effort, and people do want to know how they contribute to the greater good. Yep. So highlighting others, I think, is is a powerful message. Uh, oh, and then this one, do less, but do it well, a.k.a. slow yeah. down to speed up. Yeah. That is that not the philosophy of productivity? Yeah, and one of the troubles within dentistry is we want to be the jack of all trades and do it all and increase our service mix. And then there are times when it might be smart to go, do we need all of this service mix? Does that make sense? Does that absolutely. make sense? It absolutely makes sense. There's, you should be thoughtful about, you know what I like what you just said there, Chad, be thoughtful as a visionary about the integration of the changes you want to make. So you might have a vision for X amount of services, X amount of new procedures, methodology, yeah. modalities, whatever it is, bringing it in, truly slow down and think about what your team can adopt, what you can adopt. Uh, the marketing implications. So run it through the pipeline. And uh, I have experienced this too many great ideas without thoughtful execution. You know, everything ends up being watered down. Yeah. 
the success is not as great as you would hope it to be. So slow down to speed up. Yep. Uh, Deep breathing club. That was another really good tip. Uh, yes. He ended up getting the team shirts. At, I think that was at Madison Park. 11 Madison Park, he had um, DBC shirts, deep breathing club shirts to help keep your cool. And I can only imagine in food service, you know, we've seen the Gordon Ramsay shows where everything is really tense and hot and, and tempers can flare, uh, you know, to practice mindfulness in that kind of environment that is so time bound and meticulous, like everything has to just kind of come off seamlessly. Yep. Uh, practicing that is helpful. And yes. dentistry is the same way uh yeah. in that there's uh there's a hallway slash office slash sterilization area slash kitchen area um uh dialogue where there's sweat going on and you know stuff is happening mm -hmm. and then there's th that's behind the curtain of the show and then in front of the curtain of the show is in the operatory so, you know, like I'll, I'll, I might run from room to room, but then, you know, like when I enter the room, it's just mm -hmm. nice and slow, casual. Hey, how are you? And then it might be like, okay, and I'll see you later. And then I walk out and I kind of skip, 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 you know, and get going to the next place. Uh, stuff in like your, that. In your lederhosen. In my lederhosen. Uh, but along those lines too. So that is the, you know, the show um, in front of the scene, behind the scene. Um, but also, you know, there are times when uh, you have difficult patients um, and those difficult patients, um, you have to be professional with and maybe not at dinner time or on the weekend or at the staff meeting when you're going to want to discuss it in detail and kind of grovel about it uh, and whatnot. That's fine. I mean, I, I really I don't mind that in in its own place. But um, you do have to do the deep breath club because there are some people who are extra special of patients. We were really excited because um, we had some difficult uh, patients recently and they ended up uh, transferring and we all celebrated. We were really excited that they left. Um, yeah. And uh, so, and that's kind of a fun thing too. Like, can you actually celebrate when you have turds that leave your office, you know? Uh, and I'm not calling those people turds. I was thinking of other, op, you know, like opportunities uh, <laughs> and that you can, you can get better, but like um, we were actually, you know, we were, um, they were, they were a challenge and, and they didn't like the pricing of stuff. And I was just like, well, I mean, and yet they keep coming back you know, mm -hmm. to get this and that done. Um, so it, it was, it was actually kind of a mini, uh, very quick, but it was, kind of, they said, oh yeah, that couple, they transferred. I was like, really? And they're like, yeah, high five, right? <laughs> and so, you know, uh, we don't, of course, do that in front of the patient. And the same thing with these people, they might have those kinds of people where they're like, I hope they never come back to this restaurant again. And yet, in front of them, you know, they're doing the deep breath club uh, to mm -hmm. to get through those moments because that's understood um, between them, you know, like restaurant workers, I wouldn't quite get it, you know, because I've never worked in a restaurant, but I can understand from a, a side of the, you know, the customer that is being demanding slash the patient who's being demanding that puts a kind of a strain on the relationship. And it's almost like they're taking advantage of the fact that we're both humans you know, I'm trying to serve you. Let me serve you. And please understand, I might not get it right. Right. You know, I'm, I might not get it. I might not get it perfect every time. And let me get it to excellence. But, you know, bear with me when I'm, you know, not going to get it there the first time. Or my assistant or my hygienist or my front desk person, you know. My go to is. When I, if I can stay calm in the moment, depending on what's happening, as I, I usually say, we, we really are all humans trying the best we can. That's right. And human means that we're, we're just not perfect as much as we want to be. So, um, an accident is an accident. A mistake is a mistake. A misunderstanding is a misunderstanding. It does us all best if we can stay level headed about it. And that's not always the easiest to do. That does, however, slide into my last, uh, point that I took away from unreasonable hospitality and 
It was um, touching the lapel and using sign language to communicate. That was so cool. It was amazing. And I want to bring it into dentistry immediately. I, I just think, I think it could make the experience that much, much more seamless and, um, and easy. So, so Will tells the story of they decided that they wanted to eliminate the front check-in area entirely and then greet somebody by name. So you imagine walking into a restaurant and they say, oh my gosh, Chad, it's so great to see you. We have been anticipating your visit. We know you made this reservation. And then they positioned the maitre d's in such a way so that you, Chad, couldn't, you would just see the host there, but the host can see someone like behind them checking to see if the table's ready. And then they would use sign language to indicate whether or not the table was ready. So it's a seamless experience. There's no tablet, book, you know, seat them at seat 23 or anything like that. Uh, then the host says, oh, you know, let me, you know, your table's ready. Let me take you there. And it just feels psychic and intuitive. I thought that was so brilliant. And if it wasn't, so if the sign language was table's not ready, then the host says, you know, Chad, I, I can't wait to, to seat you over here at the bar. Yes. You know, I'm going to give you a drink or whatever it is. And, yep. um, and I'll be sure to grab you as soon as, you know, we have this ready for you. And I thought that was just super smart because Victoria Peterson often talks about ducks on the water. So on the top of the surface, everything is smooth. Like you said, in the practice, everything is relaxed and smooth. And underneath there's, you know, those little tiny webbed feet paddling so hard to get across the lake. And that's a way to create that illusion yeah. that I think is just slick. Yeah. And how does that work in dentistry? It might be sign language between a pitcher and a catcher in that style. Yes, right. But more likely, it's probably Messenger. And Messenger is a really cool tool that we have in the office where um, yes. what I like is that the front desk admin people, for example, might be looking at the person who's uh, you know talking to them. And they can double click on a pre-saved message over on the side that says, um, you know, uh, ready and opt for or ready and opt for ready to anesthetize and, you know, this and that. Um, I, and I, I was reluctant to say it, but I'll just say it for, you know, but like sales rep at the front desk, you know, like stuff like that. It's just nice to know, yes, you know, cause they, they, they'll fish for a while up front and be waiting to catch someone's eye that they can, you know, talk about their product. I understand, but you know, there are times when we don't have time for that. Right. So it, it's, it's nice. Or, you know, when I'm wrapping up with a um, patient, um, I'll say, Hey, so Sally up front is going to look over a lot of the financial details with you. Um, and so I'll just shoot her a message that says, you know, um, treatment plan and op four is ready for review, uh, you know, and that it's coming out the printer or something like that. And so that way, when I go up front, she's already pulled it out of the printer, she's looked it over. And then she says, All right, Jim, let's look this over with you, you know, stuff like that. That feels so good from a patient's perspective. It the my personal trust goes higher and higher. So it gives me confidence that everything is working as it should be. Yep. So when there's no mistakes made, oh, there was one other, there was one other takeaway that I had. I have one more bonus one. And this points back to the patient that you were kind of quasi celebrating like yeah. wasn't the best fit for the practice. And no. check out, uh, check out Bruce Baird's. He has a series. Uh, risk factors in the productive dentist podcast yes. and psycho risk is one of the, yes. one of the episodes, I think. So he's got a good, uh, a good take on it too, but, but this is good and kind of counterintuitive. I think it forces empathy. Uh, Will says being right is irrelevant. Their perception is our reality. Yeah. And that doesn't mean to me that the customer is right. No matter what, it also Correct. doesn't mean to me that you get to get run over and treated poorly. However, I have used the term in my head, your, your perception is your reality. So I use this as a parenting um, hack a lot. So if, if a child is upset about something and I maybe don't, maybe I don't think it's justified, or maybe I'm tired, or maybe, you know, ex, insert X, Y, Z excuse here on why I would want to be defensive, combative, or dismissive, because let's be realistic. We all can get that way. 
yep. often. So the trick that I put in my head, and luckily my neurological pathways have put it as a highway, is no matter what, even if I disagree with it, I say, this is your perception and this is your reality. Mm -hmm. It makes me stop and think, why would they feel that way? Why could they feel that way? What is it? Where are they coming at it from so I can better get an understanding? And I think it forces a bit of empathy to the situation. Sure. So that was a, another really smart tip that, that Will had is, um, and, and Bruce and Victoria say, would you rather be right? Or would you rather be in relationship? Which I think is an, a good take on that as well. There are rare times when you, oh man, okay. When you really want to be, uh, right. Regardless, it's like burn the relationship. You know, I'm not talking about with a significant other, but you know, well, I suppose there are people that feel that way, but, um, <clears throat> um, it just, okay. So it, it actually, it reminds me recently, and I'll have to tell you after the episode, uh, if you are ever listening to this, um, I suppose in good company, I could share this, but I don't, I, it made me think of a patient and I would hate for them to think that, you know, like I was speaking specifically about them. So I'll spare that person, okay. you know, but, but why I paused, cause I was like, oh man, I've got a really good story for this. But at the same time, it's, it's so salacious and good that I was like, I really shouldn't share it. If was it, it was it an example of when you wanted to be like you just went for it and decided I want that to be I right. wanted to be right over yes I'll just say the guy how about this I'll give generalities yeah. the guy wanted uh money back um he wanted um like it was um he thought that the insurance should cover payment for something we're not in network. And so he ended up having a, an annual deductible that made it go from him owing $50 to $250. Well, he paid all of it up front and was expecting to get back a good chunk of it from his insurance. His insurance sure. said, no, you have to pay 250. So we're only going to be paying you this much. And that's, what's cool about a fee for service office is the patient has to be more aware that their insurance really can hose them over. When your PPO, the office gets hosed over and the de the patient just goes, well, you know, I'm glad you're in contract with that insurance, you know, and, mm. but so this guy was really upset. I was, uh, I was very upset because he was being very demanding. And I told my office manager, you know what, for the, for the, for the, um, purpose of it for the, what's the word for it? Just for the example of it, yeah. I will fight this guy for this, you know, 200 bucks versus, you know, I, and I, I was just like, I, it's not that I, I said the last week I gave someone else, but you know, 4,000 bucks back. And <laughs> it's just like, well, here you go. It, so it's not that I, I don't, you know, like I can't see the value of just being like, yeah, sure, bygones, let's just move on. You know, I even wrote Bruce about this, Dr. Bruce, and and was like, what do you think about this? He said, just give the guy the money back. And I was like, absolutely not. So I I wanted to fight this guy about it. Well, in the to to this is the part where it gets tricky because it it gets mess his, you know, his story gets messy and come to find out. I wrote him and I on Christmas and I um and on I said Christmas of yes, course you did yep and I said tell you what I'll I'll just give you the money back um and it sounds like you've got a lot going on in your life yeah um it, because the like the details came out that it was this is almost like short story uh Chaucer book worthy like because um in a turn of events he thought he. I was someone else for a while. So then he's like, you, you owe me money for this and that. And I was like, what even, what are you talking about? You know, I, I, I was so, I was right. And I still am right about his insurance. But then I finally realized, you know, when, when it came down to it, he was getting me also confused with someone else. And then it come to find out he's got so many people that he's in problems with and stuff like yes. that, that I was, I just wrote and I said, you know what? I'll send you the money. Just let's, let's get this behind us. 
And I, I the other dentists uh, in Productive Dentist Academy that are in a text, they know about this. I told them they could see the red coming out of my ears. I just said, <laughs> you know, there's no way I'm paying this guy. I will go to court and fight him. I will go down to the courthouse. I will fight this guy every dollar because he was versus he would the four thousand dollars that you yes, gave back. No problem. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, I just, I was so upset about it. I was just like, no, this guy's wrong. And I was right. And I am right about it. I gave him his money back because it was about the principle mm -hmm. at first. And then I realized, okay, yes, principle aside, uh, the, what a difference two weeks made or a week or so, because at one point I was like, nope, over the principle, I will win in court. And then afterwards tip his attorney 200 bucks, you know, out the, going out the door. I was that mad. <laughs> I was just like, I, you were no. going to prove a point. You oh were ready. my goodness. I was like, you know, let, let's do attorneys. Let's go down to small claims. I will <laughs> waste a whole week. If necessary, we will do this because you're wrong. And then come to like over time, I started, he didn't even plead his case. He indirectly pled his case by what, what like, it was obvious what was going on um, after a while in his life that I was just like, you know what, man, you got a lot going on. Um, sorry to hear that. Um, you know, so why don't, why, why don't we just, I'll just send you the money. And he actually then got, you know, what's funny. So here's the close to the story. So he is just like, thanks, man. Merry Christmas too. You know, like, I really love coming to you guys' place. You get all, all your team was just, is just the best. And I thought, well, I hope to never see you again. <laughs> But that's awfully nice of him to say, because I just thought, I don't ever want to see him again. It's such a hassle. Um, so there you go, listeners. Um, enjoy that story. Yes, uh, even Chad gets upset with people and, you know, whatever. Finds resolution. There's a resolution around it. I it, It's been a trip. Uh, not a trip. It's been a trick, definitely, to always think back to what what is going on underneath the surface. So yeah. if I'm not in a lizard brain, meaning I'm not like my amygdala isn't hijacked yes. and I'm not emotionally compromised. Yes, yeah. When I'm emotionally compromised, it's really rough. And that's when I will go right down that route of, nope, I'm right. And I'm going to, I'm going to die on this hill and I'm going to yes. go for it. And if I can't get out of that, I still work on that. I will always work on trying to be then if something gets me in that type of of state, but it is a definitely a good pattern interrupt to say, okay, what is going on with this person in this moment? Is it really about the $200 or is something else contributing to it? And I find nine times out of 10, like you likely found out in your story there, there was other things going on that contributed to it. It's not just the $200 that this person was concerned about. There were other things probably happening. And, um, and I have used that in communication over the years and said, you know, is there, is there, you know, it sounds like a lot is going on, like you said, or it sounds yep. like there might be a lot of things going on. How can I, how can I help? You know, what will, what will make this right? If we're able to make that move strategically, I think that's when we can stay in relationship, but we've all been guilty of pushing forward and just going for what's right. Yep. Yeah. Well, that is my take on Unreasonable Hospitality. I thought Fantastic. it was an exceptional book. I can't wait to 95.5, win, 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 raindrops creating oceans, finishing strong, all of it. Yep. Will Gadara wrote a great book and uh, more books to come, everybody. So uh, um, we have not chosen which what one is we're it? What's do. our next one, Chad? Well, that's, 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 we need to look at our list. Uh, You're not going to name it now. I can't hold I, your feet to I the know. fire. This was my choice, thanks to Dr. Adrian Reynolds. So, uh, it's your choice now. Yeah, I uh, no, I don't. Uh, I don't remember what's. I I I'm very methodical about this. I want to go down our list and I forget okay. uh, what one's the next one. So okay, you all are just gonna have to wait to see the uh, Clint uses calf picture and what book we're gonna do next. So with that if said, there's, if there's a book that you want listeners to email oh, email us. Yeah, uh, we probably won't listen, but it'd be great to hear from. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. We probably won't listen. <laughs> So <laughs> I bet it, there's a there's a slight chance that that book might be on our list, but nonetheless, we can certainly work it in because we have Audible. That's right. That's <laughs> so, right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Until next week. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of Everyday Practices Podcast. Chad and I are here every week thanks to our community of listeners just like you, and we'd love your help. It would mean the world if you can help spread the word by sharing this episode with a fellow dentist and leave us a review on iTunes or Spotify. Do you have an extraordinary story you'd like to share or feedback on how we can make this podcast even more awesome? Drop us an email at podcast at productivedentist.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts from Productive Dentist Academy at productivedentist.com slash podcasts. See you next week.